Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video, and my neck really hurts for some reason. Today's video, we're going to be going over this month in Dragalia Lost, the thing that they do every month. If you're a new player to Dragalia Lost, basically, this will tell us what's going to be happening in all of Dragalia Lost for this month, basically. Um, so that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like, comment, tell me, comment about any of the things I've talked about in this video specifically, and you can subscribe to me if you want some more videos from me. We're almost at 2,000. I'm at, I'm at 97 away last I checked, but chances are I'll lose some people here and there. So let's begin. This starts off with telling us, yo, Cage Desire, go check that out. It's really good, and I agree. It's really good, Sophia. As you can see here is the free character. She's fantastic. She's built extremely good. Her even if you don't like using her as a unit, her co ability is pretty solid. And she's a free 50 mana uh, circle, so get to it. <laughs> like um, you can't beat free. That's uh, that's how I feel about that. The special boss raid also is pretty cool. As you can see here, it uses a bunch of different elements, but at this point, it's literally telling you about stuff that is happening currently in the game. The current banner is still, as of the recording of this, Joker, Mona, and Arsene. It's really cool that they made um, Arsene and then also Zoro for Mona and then also Carmen for... Um, Anne. And if you don't know, Anne is the part two summon banner for um, for this collab. And she's going to be coming a little bit later down the line. She, they kind of speak to her of what she does. Although she technically is a lance user in terms of Dragalia Lost Weaponry, fans will no doubt recognize the whip that she uses to great effect when attacking and half of the machine gun bullets when she performs a force strike. Just like fellow Phantom Thieves, Joker, and Mona, she can extend she can expend her persona gauge to call upon her very own persona, Carmen, to fight by her side. For further details, including her stats, you can check out the the stuff they put out for her. She's all these units from the Persona 5 collab are really good. Um, here's some stuff you can get. I would recommend getting the drops here because the drops in this event are extremely good if you're a brand new player, and they're also extremely good if you're still playing the game. Uh, some really cool stickers, the works. So, and if also if you use the Joker skin in Alberian Royale, then you get to have Arsene as a skin as well. That's what that will be your dragon. So that's Cage Desire, and it's going on until the 11th. Now let's go into the stuff for the future of this month. A Valentine's themed onslaught event will be held in mid-February. Who better to celebrate the day of romance than Luca's longtime admirer Chelsea? I uh, hope you're looking forward to a new version of this last longing for love in another episode or seemingly never-ending saga to capture Luca's heart. Now, what I'm about to say and in no way is a negative towards Chelsea, but if you want to talk about who better to celebrate the day of romance than Luca's longtime admirer, let me tell you about who it should be. It should be Mim. The woman who has been for us since day one, who has multiple um, Dragalia lost, uh, comics <laughs> that are about her trying to get with the prince. <laughs> I don't think, like, Chelsea is obviously all about Luca, for sure. But if you're gonna tell me who between them is more, if anything, this should be a double banner with Chelsea and Mim. Because they are the two, like, hardcore trying to get it girls that aren't gonna be able to get it at the end of the day. Um, but I digest. I digest. I digress. I also digest, but... That's separate from the digressing. Um, so because my current, my basic rant over, it's not looking like Va Valentine's Day Mim is not in the cards for me this year. So that means I can go full hog for Anne and Mona because I have I don't have Mona yet. I have Arsene and I have Joker. And I will gladly go all out and then start saving from then on. Uh, it's not that I dislike Chelsea, it's just that, and I think she actually looks super cool. I like the little uh, Luca doll here. Like, there's a lot of cool stuff going on in her design that I like. I even like the little hat thing she's got rocking right now. Kind of reminds me of uh, Marie Antoinette in uh, Fake Grand Order. She actually is, looks a lot like Marie Antoinette, now that, but a bunny girl version. Um... I need to start saving, because I need to start saving up for what is this point the 1.5 year anniversary. So, um, and probably the next galley unit as well. But at this point, once this the hype of Persona is gone, I need to go back into deep saving. Uh, 
I'll still do summon videos, obviously, uh, if a character super interests me. And obviously, if they release a mem, then I'm dropping everything to go get mem. Um, but you need to find specific units that you're just like, this is my break period. This is the part where I'm just not going to summon. And for me personally, this is the point. I look forward to looking for the event. Uh, I don't know a lot about Chelsea, but I look forward to seeing her crazy Valentine's Day event, I guess. It being an onslaught is kind of a bummer, though. Not my favorite type of event. But some people seem to like them, so I'm not going to complain. Uh, the Vault with Fate raid event will make a return in mid-February. You'll have a chance to add the Adventurer Felicia to your team if you haven't already. When was the last time this event was added? Because I could have swore this event has not come back since it launched. Because I cannot remember a time where I have seen Felicia and this dragon again. Um... This, is, this makes sense for them to add it in February because this is a loving romance between a bunny girl and a dragon. Um, it's probably the most loving event, I think, in all of Dragalia, if I'm being 100% honest with you. Uh, <laughs> I can't. The, it definitely sticks in my mind, the love between this dragon and this bunny girl. It's intense. It's intense to the point where I don't see Felicia with anyone else but this dragon. Um, so that's cool that it's coming back. You can correct me if I'm wrong about but I could have swore this event has never been rerun. Just because I'd never see Felicia anywhere. And I don't see this dragon anywhere. That also kind of speaks to how good they are, I guess. Maybe that means the Felicia is going to get a mana spiral. There's no saving you, but there is potential in saving you. Uh, also, starting with part 1 of chapter 18, one half of each uh, main campaign chapter will be added each month. The first half, part 1 of chapter 18, will be added in late February. Our heroes have their sights on the fairy kingdom, but will be able to navigate the forest of the fairies. And then, of course, time attack is coming back, this time with uh, Cayenne. It will be light-themed, uh, light so get your shadow stuff ready. Um... It looks like the time attacks are doing well for them. It seems that they, they're they they're bringing them back. I didn't see people quitting like they did the first time Dragalia tried uh, time attack stuff. Um, a new facility event will be held in late February following the events of the story that was released last September. A plot will center around Apostles of North Grestea's Ilian Church. Here a sneak, here's a sneak peek at the Apostle who will be appearing at Adventurer, a young man named Faris. Faris? And here he is, rocking the gun of his holy lord and savior, Ilya, along with a knife. This looks like a church-going boy to me. Makes sense. Future updates. Rise of the Sinister Domains, the first in the new series of quests to follow the Agito Uprising, pits you against powerful bosses that arrive in early March. With the addition of the quest, a number of worm print slots available uh, to weapons will be increased, and players will be able to earn worm prints that can only be equipped to these specific slots. Further details on this system will be provided next month. Also, in the next version update, players will be able to copy the team setups to and from different slots in the team menu. You can also register an individual adventurer's weapon, dragon, and worm print in the adventurer themselves instead of a particular team setup. With new varieties of quests being added over time, we hope that the feature will help players more quickly and easily manage the best teams of their roster. This is the, so. Just to tell you, this is the second time I'm recording this video, because the first time I read this part where they said they were adding more worm print slots, immediately made me go, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you adding worm print slots when it's already super hard to equip so many worm, uh, worm prints already? But thankfully with this, um, it's going to be much easier. Uh, and there's another thing I want to also mention, but let me go into here. In addition, a button that allows players to permit adventurers to shapeshift into their equipped dragon automatically during autoplay will be added. This setting will work with the auto repeat feature, so you may find that the extra boost from shapeshifting has opened up some quests that you weren't able to auto repeat before. And yes, that will be very helpful for people who can't, who are on the lower end of might, who can't um, auto repeat as well. Um, so basically, the reason I was saying this is that my Mim, for example, the way I like to use my Mim is that I like to make her dragon, dragon form super strong. The problem is, is that when you're using that in auto battle, um, 
she basically gets none of those benefits because you can't go dragon during auto. So what I do is that I actually have two sets of worm prints, one from when I auto with Min, Wim and one when I don't auto with Mim. And it was getting to be a real pain in the ass, even with different team slots to kind of keep track of what was what. Because anytime I was like, well, I want to farm... Let me use this mim. Oh, I don't want to ruin an entire team just to make this farmable for this event. So let me start up another damn team event and then, ugh, it was a, it was disgusting. So this is a good change. It's been needed for a while. They've been slowly building up the worm print system to the point where it's super manageable. The only thing I'm really, I really wish they added is they need to add a button that just automatically gives a hundred, um power to a print because i'm tired of clicking and then going let me give you 50 let me give you 50 all right we're done it's a waste of time it, it honestly that i don't understand why that menu has to be separate from everything else um that's the one thing i would kind of improve next um but with this it should be pretty good um so they've already said that these specific um bosses aren't going to be related to weapons so you can keep on grinding for Ag agidos and have no problem um it looks like for the most part agidos will be the final weapon um no more weapons will be coming afterwards which is good because the main problem i had with which a lot of people had a problem with is that when it went from high dragon trial weapons to agito weapons it was a real big pain in the ass because it was like well we you just basically <laughs> you move the totem pole i spent so much goddamn time and energy trying to get this um weapon to fully built out and now you've completely changed this to now where it's like oh now there's something else for me to chase but i kind of like the idea of like okay yeah maybe if you beat them you get a special worm print that's really good and that works out for me um but actually we'll see um the addition of it another worm print is going to be really interesting it being only specific worm prints makes it seem like it they, maybe they're trying to steer away from so many people using worm prints as like all right let me put plague bringer let me put whatever thing deals bonus damage i don't know i don't know we'll see what kind of worm prints end up being available for that but it could end up and we'll see if it ends up, like, if it's going to be a thing where, like, oh, only specific um, adventures actually benefit from that additional Worm Print slot. And actually a vast majority of them end up not being as useful. Like, do you really need 50% more, like, for example, do you need 10% 10 10 more attack on someone like Lowen? Like, no, Lowen doesn't really need 10% more attack if you're being 100, if I'm being 100% honest with you. He needs something that's more, better suited for him. So I'm, I'm interested to see what this is going to be and how it's going to look like. Uh, good additions for sure. Also, and the auto-repeat dragon is going to be nice because now I can just focus on one set of print, prints for Mim and call it a day. So yeah, that uh, that's it. That's Dragalia Lost. They give you some meld water and some water that you can use for stuff. Um, if you're a new player, that will help you out a whole bunch. Even as an old player, I appreciate the little tiny things. Um, and that's this month in Dragalia. Obviously, a lot of it is about the Persona 5 event because that's what's hip and hot and currently in Dragalia for this month. Um, next month, I look forward to seeing potentially something about this boss. Um, and probably we're going to start seeing some stuff building towards the 1.5 anniversary. I don't know if we would start to expect another collab right away. I would say no, but I don't know what they kind of fill up. I feel like at this point we're now entering a like a specific season where it's like there's no real holidays to be mentioned. Like the last one really is Valentine's Day for this specific period. And we don't reach um, the anniversary in September in a, for a while. So let me see. So the one so one point five year anniversary should be on let me see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. It should be in March, actually. March slash April. Um, so yeah, I can see fe this February basically being a, a let's prepare, let's build up some story stuff, and let's go towards there. So we'll, you know, we'll keep track and see what's going on. But that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. Um, thanks again for leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing for all these times of me playing Dragalia. It's been really helpful. I've been 
I, I seemingly always grow with every big milestone in Dragalia along with the game. As the game gets better, I see my channel get better, and I really, um, I love to see it. Especially since Dragalia was there for me after I had lost my, my one true love gotcha, which was Ore Collection. Uh, Dragalia was there to pick up the pieces and keep me, um, keep me from going back to Dokkan. <laughs> So yeah, that's the end of today's video, everyone. You guys have a good day, and I'm going to get some goddamn water, because... <sighs> Bye!